Hey everybody, come with me. We're gonna try the brand new Perplexity Comet browser. And it's very different than everybody thinks. It's really like an AI agent baked into your browser that can do so many things I didn't even realize was possible. I think it's a good window into the future of how the internet is going to work. I'm gonna walk you through setting it up and all the ways to use it. Let's get to today's show. Hey everybody, we are doing something fun today. We are trying a brand new web browser. It's from Perplexity. I've heard a ton of really great hype. And thanks to my friend and HubSpot co-founder Darmesh Shah, I have access and I thought it would be really fun to do like a full unboxing. So I'm gonna show you exactly what it's like to set up Comet and we're gonna go through it live together. We're gonna go set up, we're gonna talk about value and we're gonna talk about use cases, how it's gonna be used for marketing, how it's gonna be used for your business. That is the show today. So we're gonna get right into it. So we are going to get started. So all I have done up to this point is downloaded Comet Browser. You can do this if you have an invite code or if you're a Perplexity Max subscriber. Those are the two folks who have access right now. And it says, unlock your personal assistant. Give it my, my full name here. And then I'm going to pick an icon. I really like this guy here. I am going to do, I, I like the device mode the best. Do I want to set Comet as my default browser? I'm sorry, not yet, guys, not yet. So now we are here in the Comet browser. It looks very similar to Safari and Chrome. Now it says, try Comet Assistant. Master your inbox and calendar. Interesting. Delegate basics. Get the gist in seconds. Oh, summarize. Automate clicks. Browse your voice. I'm not sure what that even means. Quickly find answers in your history and get insights in one click. And then it says, reference any tab for precise answers. I'm not sure what all this actually means, but we're gonna figure that we're gonna figure this out together. All right, what you'll see here is it's given me some prompts. And one of the big things you need to understand about Comet and this next wave of browsers is that they're calling themselves AI native browsers and they're AI built in and they integrate into everything you're doing. And so one of the things it's saying here is, what is my schedule for Monday? Let's try it. Let's talk AI strategy because having the tools is one thing, but knowing how to use them together, that's the game changer. The top players have nailed this and we've mapped it out for you in a no fluff guide featuring 40 plus AI tools and structured a process to build your own AI toolkit. Grab the guide and transform how you use AI. The link is in the description below. Now let's get back to today's show. So just so everybody knows, anytime you're doing anything with Claude, with ChatGPT, with Perplexity Comet, and you wanna use data that's in your Gmail, your Dropbox, whatever it may have you, you're gonna to need to dive in settings and enable some connections. Cause I just wanna test this stuff out. So now I have all of this set up. So now I should be able to do some cool things. So one of the things I can do now is try Common Assistant. Here, let's see what I can do. Can you, can you help me prep for my first meeting tomorrow morning? That's all I said, a very basic prompt. When we're using a new product like this, I wanna intentionally be basic. It's got some events here. It's got a HubSpot helps planning thing, which is charity initiatives. And it gives me some prep tips and everything to cover. Can you help me respond to some of the most important emails I haven't yet answered. Uh, it's finding like some notification emails it wants me to respond to. But what I will say about this, it's very fast. So far, it's integration with my work products have been very, very fast, uh, which, I which I certainly like. Let's go back here to comment. It says, master your calendar in your inbox. That's clearly a use case. It seems fine, but let's let's see what else we should do. Delegate basics. What does this mean? Put together a grocery cart on Instacart for me from Walmart. I would like butter chicken. Okay. So this is would be similar to like OpenAI's operator. So let's see if I can, can I, can I just give it a marketing task? Can you go and research? Ramp.com, shout out to Eric and Kareem and our friends at Ramp. Can you research ramp.com and give me a breakdown of three to five ways they could improve their marketing by browsing, by browsing their website. And can you then put those recommendations together in an email to 
their co-founders. See what it does. So it's going and it's doing some research on ramp. Highlight direct customer outcomes with video and social proof. Make AI and automation tangible with product demos. They do a lot of this stuff. Address onboarding support and trust concerns up front. Personalize for segments and use dynamic content. Here is a draft. So they got Eric and Kareem right. Eric and Kareem are the co-founders of Ramp. Shout out to those guys. And it's a pretty good, it's, it's like, it's a solid email. And you can now rewrite or export. Now will let me, yeah. And when I say export, PDF, Markdown, Doc, I can share this with somebody else to review. That's all pretty cool. I think one of the big wins about perplexity comment that is really important to know is that a lot of integrations with these AI tools are kind of read only. Like they can go get information and give it to you, but perplexity comment can go get it and do it for you. So here's what's interesting. I, I did this intentionally. I did not tell, tell perplexity what Eric and Kareem's emails were, right? So if I'm a salesperson, it's pretty sweet, right? Like I can, I can, if I've, if I've got a company, I can do the research. I can get a first draft of an email written. I can then go and review that email. And I get that email off to whoever I basically decide is the right fit at the company. Pretty interesting. It's a creating a draft and email, incorporating the marketing recommendations. So it did all of this, but it's pretty cool that it can basically do all of this and, and send it through your email in this case, Gmail, because that's where, where we're using all of this. Early products like this, I think it really does depend on what tools you use for your business. Uh, like the Google tools are just easier for a lot of these companies to integrate with. And so that's why Google is an option here. And so that's pretty sweet. That's a pretty, that's a pretty cool marketing, uh, actually cool sales use case that I hadn't quite considered yet. So that was kind of showing that they, the web browsing and the emailing feature, which is pretty cool. Get the gist in seconds. What the heck does this mean? Oh, so it has a summarize feature. Oh, I'm going to especially like this for YouTube. So, you know, YouTube, go to marketing against the grain, baby, because we love marketing against the grain. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't. And so let's go, let's go to Kieran's vibe coding. Oh, you're vibing, Kieran. What happens here is that you have, it's summarizing the current web page. One of the things I love most about Grok AI, for example, is that it does the summarization and context around an individual post on X slash you know, formerly Twitter. And so what they've done with perplexity is bring this feature to any web page, which is pretty awesome. So you could imagine if you were a marketer doing custom research, a salesperson doing prospect research, this summarization could be very valuable in putting the final end product together. So basically takes Kieran's video and break, breaks it down. And the video outlines a process where marketers can quickly create minimum viable products and code power experiences to attract and convert their ideal customer profile. And it shows exactly what it, like, that's pretty sweet. Okay, so that is summarize. What are, what, what are the other stuffs up here? This is just showing me what, oh, what I have, the media I have available to play. So I think, oh yeah, so that's interesting. So I can be on any tab, but just come here and it'll show me the different media I have open. I can pick and I can choose to play it. I can choose to cast it. It's actually a pretty sweet, just general browser feature that they're doing there, which is pretty cool. Now we ha we've talked summary. What happens here? Oh, this is the voice assistant. It's once my microphone. So let's see. Okay. Perplexity. I have a question for you. I'm looking at this video from Kieran about building web tools for businesses. I'm a landscaping company in Columbus, Ohio called Leaves of Grass, and I want to attract more local clients to my business. Could you tell me how to use the advice in this video for my business? The video talks about using Vibe Coding to create simple, interactive tools that attract potential clients by providing value upfront. For a landscaping company, you could build a tool that helps homeowners visualize seasonal plant recommendations or estimate lawn care costs based on their yard size. This kind of tool can attract local clients by offering them something useful and engaging upfront. All right, so what we saw happening right there was a new type of voice browsing that I think is really interesting and very compelling. So it's, 
you know, it's kind of funny because it's like, why do you even need this summarization feature if you have that voice feature? And because one of my core things with artificial intelligence is that it allows the internet to go from answers to action. It used to be I would do all this research, I get all these answers, and I would have to go and figure out how to take action. Now, I can just talk to it. It's like, cool, I think this video on vibe coding is cool. How does it apply to my business? What are some things I could do? And I could just keep having a conversation and I could go straight from that to have it actually specking out a tool like we've done on a previous episode of the show. If you haven't, go back, check that out. And that's just like a pretty fundamental different experience researching and using the internet. And in some ways I think is going to be One of the things I like about a desktop browsing experience in the future, where like desktop browsing is becoming very multimodal, not just text and click, but talking and I'm sure soon video uh, two-way. So that is very cool. The assistant built into the browser, or the voice assistant built into the browser, awesome. And I can see if you are a marketer, like being on a customer's website, asking it questions about their business, getting all the information you would need to build campaigns, to build sales emails, all of that ridiculously good. All right, now what do we need to do with Assistant? Oh, the Assistant just opens up this window. And what's interesting now too is like I was saying, is you can bring the AI experience to any page you're at on the internet, which I find to be pretty freaking awesome. And so what's cool is you can summarize this video, you get the key takeaways, find similar videos, run a fact check. Let's see, what if I say find similar videos? Hopefully it pulls up more marketing against the green videos, right? So level versus bolt. I've tested every hyped AI tool. I only kept using these. So it gives you a bunch and links out to all of them, which is cool. If you want more from the same creators, you can also explore the main marketing against the green YouTube channel for a broader library. So it gives you similar videos, but what we're really talking about here is, hey, we want more marketing against the grain. So that is just like toggling an assistant experience into anything, which is pretty awesome. And uh, I like that a lot. And so you can ask questions about your calendar. You can have it write for you, uh, draft for you. Pretty interesting so far. So that was getting the gist in seconds. I do think that's a good thing. Now we can automate clicks. Okay, how are we automate, automating clicks? All right, so it's basically saying, starting from the Tower of London, create a walking tour. So it's basically building a custom route in Google Maps for you. That's very cool. So this is, again, because all this is in the browser, it can take control of your browser and do a lot of the steps for you and save you a lot of time. Do something in seconds that would have taken minutes. Then you can browse with your voice. We were just talking about that. I thought that was like a pretty compelling uh, demonstration. You can find answers quickly in your history. We like that. I think that is uh, the idea of browser history has always been something, but an AI browser with memory, I think is gonna be very, very powerful. Uh, And then you can summarize and get precise answers. So what does that mean? So you're opening a bunch of tab, which of these bikes will ship to me the fastest? Oh, this is pretty sweet. And it's fine. It's going to do the, the full research on these different products and figure out how to get it to you quickly, which is pretty awesome. I, I do like that product a lot. So there's a lot here. Um, I think The biggest and and most interesting features are the writing to calendar and Gmail from just a pure productivity perspective for your marketing and sales efforts. I think summarization and the voice browsing are next level. Like I think your ability to just learn in an AI native browser and there's other AI native browsers that are out and they're gonna be coming. We are about to have an all out war in the browser world. I promise you that for sure is going to happen. Google will have to launch a totally reinvented version of Chrome. You're going to have OpenAI, I'm sure, with the browser out soon. And it's going to basically be who can win the browser war. So if you are the average marketer out there, you're getting started with AI. Is Comet worth it? I just did the full unboxing for you. So a couple of things. Am I going to continue using it? I think I am. And I think largely I'm going to do it because it can write to my email and calendar and take information from my browsing and help me get it into email 
and calendar very quickly. I want to I want to spend some time working with it with Google Docs to see one is the compatibility good and uh, and everything, but also just like how's it working? Can I build some flows there? And if I build some really cool flows, I'll come back onto the channel and and showcase those a little bit more as well. And so I'm, I think I'm gonna use it for that. The voice browsing and the summarization are gonna be my early use cases for sure. I think I'm just gonna commit to trying to use it for the next 30 days. And I'll be back with some deeper deeper lessons. I'm sure soon we'll have, an, have OpenAI or somebody have a competing browser and we'll do a full side-by-side. -side. There'll be lots of things coming. If you're a Perplexity Max customer, which is expensive, $200 a month, you can go ahead and try this, or if you have an invite. Um, but otherwise, like, subscribe, more comments coming. You can also imagine what marketing is going to look like when this is the going to be a sample of the modern browsing experience. What your website looks like is going to be less important than the information and the depth of information there that somebody can go take an action with. I think that's one of the big takeaways I would have today. Uh, this has been fun. I hope that you liked a cool unboxing and deep dive into Perplexity Comet. Uh, please let me know what questions you have. I'll answer those down in the comments and we'll be back real soon on Marking Against the Grain. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history, calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot, grow better.